What can you tell us about Tide? Yeah, so uh, the Coast website, zeroxcoast.com, um, has another project on it that we are wanting to talk about, um, but we can't, unfortunately, release too much information about it or make forward-looking statements. Uh, again, we were talking before stream a little bit about the securities implications of making forward-looking statements in this industry, especially when you have um, you know, major pieces of leg legislation that are pending that could change how the industry is regulated. You need to be very careful. And uh, so while we are, we are certainly less risk-averse than our attorneys, we have to be governed by what our attorneys tell us, and securities attorneys are, are risk-averse generally. So... Um, look, we will probably at some point seek a, um, a, a, a letter from the SEC, which will be like a no enforcement letter where you would sort of go through a process with them of explaining what your product or service does. And then they return to you what would be termed a no action letter. And a no action letter would give you some confidence that you could move forward with the process you described, the product that you're describing, and not um, have future leg uh, litigation directed at you or enforcement uh, leveled at you. So that's something that if you're a, a developer of a blockchain product in the United States, especially, you might want to consider because relatively speaking to, um, in terms of the cost, receiving a no action letter is relatively inexpensive compared to some of the other avenues you could go down. And certainly less, less expensive than the SEC kicking in your door and stopping your operations. So. Um, is, yeah. how, how is it? I mean, is it kind of one of the guaranteed things where if you send them a letter, they'll send you one back? <laughs> it's not like, I send you one easy, send me two back. Like, but yeah, like, it's, it's, it's not quite like that. You have to have it drafted by an attorney, a securities attorney who applies it to them. You have to go into pretty in-depth detail about your operation and, and how your product works. And you have to pass tests um, that are like-kind tests where... You know, you, you might describe in your white paper, for example, that your uh, product is designed to appreciate. But if your product actually, you know, delivers interest to shareholders, for example, then you might fail a like kind test and they could deem you to be like a, um, a time deposit, for example. Um, so you have to be very careful with securities law that even though you're describing your product one way, if it if you're describing it in such a way that um, it's it's sorry, if the product actually does something that is similar to an existing product, then you mm. could be uh, uh, subject to a securities violation. So I know that's a lot of legalese, but it, we're very, very deep into this. And as a result, we can't say too much about Tide. How, what I can say, it? however, sorry. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So what I can say, however, is it's a project we've been working on for six months. It's a project that builds a layer of features on top of existing assets that everybody has heard of and that like they like and it um it is actually only step one of three um in creating that additional feature set we can't build it all into one asset or one token mm. um, so tide will be one of a series of products that we'll be releasing over the next six to nine to ten months um, that will add functionality to the ecosystem and create repeatability. And um, we're very, very excited about it. Um, so it'll, it'll hopefully be out um, relatively soon. We took the decision very recently that instead of releasing it on Ethereum, um, it probably makes the most sense for us to wait for Pulse Chain to be live for us to release because mm -hmm. there are some dependencies in the contract that would make more sense if they were on um or if they were utilizing Pulse X as yeah. opposed to Uniswap. So we don't want to be hamstrung by the, the fork in that case. So we will be releasing the code on Testnet V2B with our DAP. Um, that'll be happening mm. in the next month, six weeks, eight weeks, something like that. So everybody will get a chance to play with Tide, be hopefully before Pulse Chain launches. And then we will launch it on Pulse Chain. And then we will come back and actually release it on Ethereum as well. And we'll link it up to Uniswap, probably V3, although it'll be linked to Unis uh, to Pulse X on Pulse Chain. Hmm. It, so is that the um, is that the reason to get weight right now? Is because is that you know what you would you would say would be the best benefit in participating in, in weight now? Is it can be used? You know, maybe it interacts with Tide somehow. Maybe it you know gets you on that list of, of the other tokens in the ecosystem. Is that something that uh, it's is why why people would participate in in weight? Why they would participate in weight? Um, yeah, like why would they claim weight and all that? 
So I can I can say this definitively. We we did not set out to build Tide with weight in mind at all. And so we mm. we got very, very far along on the Tide contract. In fact, we've deployed several versions on V2B testnet. Um, and we've been playing with our own demo DAP with a, a, a group of maybe 55 or 60 testers who are, are aware of it and have been interacting with it. So um, we're a long way down the line with Tide and we did not in, uh, intend at any point to incorporate weight into Tide. Um, however, we have seen, you know, big reaction from the community and a lot of people asking about the future utility for weight. And... Um, you know, there is certainly a group of people out there that will be established by claiming weight and participating in our first release that could potentially see um, see some sort of benefit in the future. Um, that's, that's all I can really say. The weight OGs may uh, may have some future benefits. No weight expectations. Weight expectations. <laughs> sure. Wex, <laughs> no weight expectations. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. It's uh Again, coming into this, I'm 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 always uh, with new projects and stuff. You know, I, try, I want to ask good questions. I want to be uh, optimistically skeptical in a lot of ways. So I'm I'm trying to hit you on a few different angles. But uh, yeah, so far. The, yeah. So in line with what you're talking about, like we've we've seen very recently that the the products that are in the ecosystem already that people know. I mean, you don't have to go very far to find examples of you know, a hedron that is, you know, going to create staking functions with Icosa in the future. And if you had have claimed your hedron initially, you probably didn't know that that was going to happen at some point. And it was responsibly disclosed that, hey, we're working on this thing, but it wasn't something that you knew initially. And, you know, something similar is happening with Pulse Doge um, and something similar is happening with um, with Maxi and and, uh, and Team. So there, there are definitely people who see that, hey, you know, in the short term, I need to release a product that, that has product market fit and that is going to be useful for people. And then the next task becomes, okay, how do I um, create value for those people with an additional product and make sure that they're taken care of or receive some sort of advantage in, um, in the new feature set? Because obviously, like dealing with smart contracts, when you want to introduce new features, you need new contracts. So 